Hey friend, welcome back to the Created Worthy Podcast. I am your host and fellow worthy warrior, Danielle Damrell. On this show, we are creating space for genuine connection by unifying women of all ages, backgrounds, and experiences. So grab your favorite drink and get ready to listen as we take a deep dive into our stories, making sure to honor and protect them in the process. We will also uncover the threads of creative processing that have already played a part in each of our lives. When we know how to utilize this as a skill, we can continue growing into the joy-filled, triumphant women we are created to be. You are created worthy. Hello, welcome back to the Created Worthy Podcast. Today, I am joined by another worthy warrior, Monina Wright. Monina is a licensed esthetician and professional makeup artist, speaker, beauty trainer, leader of the top-ranked bridal makeup team in the Bay Area, and mother of two. As the founder and CEO of Modern Beauty Agency, she has worked and mentored many makeup artists, offering her makeup and skincare expertise to prepare women entrepreneurs to look and feel their best on camera and in live presentations. Prior to becoming an entrepreneur, She spent four years in education and three years in corporate America. She is a frequent speaker to women's groups on proper makeup techniques for film and video, as well as how to maintain healthy, glowing skin. Monina's work has been featured on TV and movies, as well as in M Magazine and several wedding blog posts and publications. She is passionate about helping female entrepreneurs embrace their natural beauty and feel confident in their own skin, both on and off camera. And her bridal team services brides throughout the Bay Area, Monterey, and Tahoe area. Monina, thank you so much for joining me today on the Created Worthy podcast. I am so excited to hear more about your story. Oh, thank you, Danielle, for asking me to be on your show. I'm so honored. Um, to be here. So thank you. (laughs) Yes, of course. So let's get started. I would love to start with how in the world did you end up in the makeup field? Um, Yeah, it's funny because it's kind of, it was kind of an accident. (laughs) Um, (laughs) What I mean by that is, okay, so as um, a kid growing up, um, I just, at the age of 10, I really started to develop really, really bad acne. And my mom had really beautiful skin, so she really didn't know what to do for me. So uh, unfortunately, the only thing she knew what to do was to take me to a dermatologist. And at the time, all they would ever give me is like the latest, you know, drug or antibiotic. Um, And what's interesting is now that I think about it, back then, they never even asked me like what I was doing or what I was eating. They never really dove into what would be causing it. So, you know, moving forward, um, now that I know, um, now that I'm in the aesthetics field, I understand that the, the relationship between your gut health and your skin health. And unfortunately, and I think this happens a lot still, is people don't pay attention to the gut health. And so the antibiotics was actually creating a worse, it was actually worsening my acne. And then by the time I got to junior high and high school, I started to develop really, really bad, um, what they call vulgaris acne. And so it would leave um, really bad scarring on the skin. And so even if I wasn't breaking out, the scarring alone was just really, um, it just affected my, uh, my, when I looked in the mirror, I just didn't like what I, how, what I saw. So it got to the point and I'm a, I was a really active kid. I wanted to do everything, but having that like lack of confidence and just hating what I look like, I had to do something about it. So I begged my mom if I could start wearing makeup because <laughs> that was the only thing I can think of to like at least get rid of some of the redness, some of the discoloration. So I wouldn't feel so self-conscious about leaving the house. So, and, and back then that was a pretty big deal because I'm a Filipino um, in a Filipino household. We couldn't um, put nail polish on. We couldn't wax. We couldn't do makeup. Oh. It was like, something you just didn't do. And so for her to allow me to wear makeup in eighth grade was a big deal. Um, But she saw that it really did elevate my confidence. And so now moving forward, when I do see women who have, who don't like the the way their skin looks, I I can feel for them. I really know how, when you look in the mirror, how much that really affects your confidence. So whether you're just, you know, going on, 
on camera for business or just to go visit family, just that confidence that you have, you know, is so important. And, and it's not vanity to me. It's like having good, healthy skin is, is the health. There's a health benefit to it. Right. Like for me, the whole gut health issue, once I actually um, figured out that that was the issue, I met my first esthetician in college and she actually was the very first person to ever tell me to take a journal and figure out, do I have triggers? Because we do, a lot of us, um, our bodies affect, get affected by certain things. And for me, um, the big one was sugar and dairy. And oh. as a kid, that's all I drank was right. milk. <laughs> yes, every, and lots you know, of right? sugar. Exactly. And so um, come to find out that that creates something called candida in your gut lining. And that's what was causing all of the breakouts. So wow. we, after college, then I really developed a passion for, for skincare. So that's how come I then went back to school after I graduated from college and I got my license in um, aesthetic. Because, um, yeah, once, once the wow. makeup started to happen, um, I started getting really good with makeup because I was always covering up my, my discoloration and I was learning how to make my skin look good even though maybe it wasn't that healthy, I was at least covering it up. And then moving forward, all of a sudden, everyone started asking me to do their makeup. So in college, I was like the go-to person to do their makeup and their hair. Then after college, everyone started getting married. And that's how I stumbled into the bridal industry. And yeah, I was actually on accident. I, it wasn't yeah. something I could do. Um, all of a sudden, people were just calling me and asking me if I could do their wedding makeup. And at the time I was at corporate and um, I remember the very first client um, called me who wasn't a friend of mine. She said that she had seen my work. Um, she was at someone's wedding and asked how much I charged because she was going to get married. Well, I told her, I said, oh, can I get back to you? Because I'm in the middle of something. Well, I hung up and I told my husband, I said, okay, she's asking me how much do I charge? And he goes, we'll give her a number. But I didn't know I wasn't in business. So I, simple. Like, no idea. like, really, you think it's that simple? <laughs> yeah, so I, I had, I, 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 so what I did was um, I just looked to see like, okay, kind of like what's the medium range? Like what's the low end, what's the high end? And then I just came up with a, a medium range. And to this day, I'm pretty much the same. I, I try to stay um, in the mid, mid, not the high or the low. I'm always in the middle. So I want to be able to service as many women as I can. Like just for me, I know how much, how important it is to, to look your best, you know, um, especially on your wedding day. So right. yeah. That's oh my it. goodness. So at what point were you able to go from being in corporate America and you, you had mentioned education as well. Do you want to go back a little bit and talk to us about what your career looked like before you did start taking on clients professionally? Yeah, it, it's actually so crazy um, how everything um, worked out because like I said, I went to school not thinking makeup at all or aesthetics or cosmetology. Yeah. And I tell my parents, I said, I'm so sorry. I could have saved you so much money if I could just went to straight to cosmetology school. But you no, know, again, being in an Asian household, you know, college was very important. Yeah. So I did go off to college. I went to UCSD, graduated from there. What did you get your degree in? I got, uh, I actually started as a bio major, <laughs> so oh. I I was cool. um, but that, uh, physics and I didn't get along very well. So I ended up switching <laughs> my sophomore year. I switched to, um, developmental psychology because I had taken a psychology class over the summer and I really, really, really enjoyed it. Um, and I wanted to work with kids in some capacity. So I, I went ahead and changed my major to developmental psychology. And so that's what I graduated with and that actually come to find out translates into early childhood education units so okay. right out of college I was able to um, teach in the preschool and kindergarten level because um, I wanted to work with kids um, when my mom said oh I want you to be a doctor I said okay well, maybe I could be a, a pediatrician but again like I said unfortunately um, med school was not on the horizon for me so I went into um, unfortunately slash for fortunately. Right? Yes, unfortunately, yes, <laughs> exactly. It, it wasn't meant to be, obviously, but yes. I really loved kids. I wanted to work with kids. So when I found out I could actually teach with my developmental psychology um, degree, I was really, really excited. So right out of college, I went into a private um, preschool and I taught a junior kindergarten class um, for a couple of years. Really loved it loved working with 
with the, the kids and seeing them grow and flourish. So that I, that's where my heart was. I really, really wanted to make an impact somehow. Um, and I felt like teaching these young humans <laughs> from a young age was my way of, of doing that. Um, unfortunately, um, this was over 20 years ago. I mean, granted, it was over 20 years ago that the last school I was at, I was actually the director of the school and I was only getting $9 an hour. <laughs> Are you serious? You're yeah. like, how do I live off of this? And you, it's, Kate, you have an education. So I assume. Yeah. 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 It's very sad. And then just imagine I was a director getting $9 an hour. So imagine how little my teachers were getting paid. And I mean, it broke my heart, but I had to leave because um, I just couldn't live on that, especially in the Bay Area. So I, I made the decision to leave um, teaching and I was just kind of taking a little break, trying to figure out what I was going to do. And I was offered a temporary job at Cisco Systems. So I worked there for the next two and a half years. Cisco, my- is that is that a distribution company? What is Cisco? Oh, it's funny you say that. Cisco, no. So not Cisco, the distribution. Cisco, the um, uh, computer company. Here oh, in the okay. System. Okay. So um, they were pretty new at the time. And... Um, I went in and it was good money. I had, you know, all of the the benefits and everything that everyone wants, but I, I couldn't do it. I, you know, being a creative sitting down in a cubicle for eight hours, I was yes. dying slowly. <laughs> so crushing. It was. Yeah. And I realized it at the time, but then all of a sudden I started to develop migraines. Um, mm. I hated getting up in the morning to go to work. I'm like, this is not the life I intended to live, yeah. you know, waking up and not, I mean, you were waking up and waiting for the weekend to come. I didn't want that to be my life. Um, and of course, just having the migraines from being on the computer all day long um, definitely was not the, the route I wanted to take. So um, with the encouragement of my husband, actually, if it wasn't for my husband, we wouldn't be talking today because Mm -hmm. he saw how um, working at corporate was just depleting me of any joy, any creativity. I I was, I was miserable. So he saw that I lit up whenever I went and did weddings because I was doing weddings on the side, but it was more or less for fun at that point. And he's the one who suggested, why don't you turn that into a full-time career? And at first I looked at him and I thought, are you crazy? My parents paid for me to go to college and (laughs) I can't just do makeup now. And, and, you know, it really got me to think, what does make me happy? And it definitely wasn't corporate. Teaching made me happy, but it doesn't pay the bills. Mm -hmm. So I got... I was fortunate enough to have a husband who realized I wasn't reaching my full potential. And he said, I will create a studio for you because we had three bedrooms. We didn't have kids yet. So he turned one of the rooms into a a home studio for me. Wow. Yeah. And he said, just quit your Cisco job and just do this full time. So, yeah, I mean, makes me cry because if it wasn't for That is so (laughs) sweet. So... I think that that's, do you want to tell me a little bit about how you and your husband met? Oh, yeah, of course. Um, So by the way, he's my soulmate um, and we've been married, oh my gosh, 27 years now. <gasps> Congratulations. <laughs> Every year is mo- monumental, but you guys are coming up on 30 and you're still so young. Oh, you're so sweet. I don't feel that young, but thank you. <laughs> oh, man. Nah. Um, yeah, so we actually, um, him and I, I think we just have an entrepreneur spirit because we actually met at a conference um, in our early 20s. We were both at a business conference and we just happened to have uh, mutual friends at that conference. So that's how we initially met. We okay. were introduced um, at a conference. Yeah, and I was still in San Diego at the time and I came up to, um, to this conference in San Francisco and that's where we initially met. Um, and then I went back to San Diego and then I came home for the summer. Cause this is where my, my whole family is here in the Bay area and ran into him again. And we just, I mean, we just hit it off. So, um, just started 
to just talk on the phone. And it was kind of like a long distance because I was still in San Diego. So um, it was really nice because when you're on the phone every night, it kind of, it almost, I feel like it just made our relationship go quicker. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I was older. So um, him and I had just come out of um, long-term relationships ourselves and weren't really looking, but we were more like friends in the beginning. But I don't know. I think back then we would actually write each other because we didn't Aww. have cell phones yet. <laughs> yeah. Do you, oh, I, I almost feel like that's that's better, though, because you have to be even more intentional to write a letter. Exactly. And yeah. and creative with our letters, I'd make like cute little, you know, being the preschool teacher <laughs> background, I would like create all these really cute little little um, letters and things that I would send him. And I, it's so cute. The other, gosh, a few weeks back, he, um, he mentioned that he still had all of them in a, Aww. in an envelope uh, in his desk. So I thought that was really what a sweet. romantic he is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he's really not. That's the crazy thing. He's, he's not that much of a romantic. And um, I always feel bad. I tell my kids, I go, the one and only time your father attempted to be romantic I totally blew it <laughs> <laughs> that's like me every time my husband like tries I'm like oh what are you doing but then I'm also like romance me <laughs> yeah. oh, I, I I know I feel so bad for him he tried really hard to make his proposal very special for us and it all fell by the wayside because I missed my plane <laughs> oh my gosh I, yeah he was so cute he actually had the exact booth in the restaurant that his father proposed to his mom, it was all like reserved and ready for us. And That's... I missed my plane. So we missed our reservation. So, and oh he's... my gosh. <laughs> and he didn't want to wait any longer. He didn't want to go through the whole weekend and not proposing. So he picked me up, sent me on top of his truck, and proposed to me in the garage. <laughs> Oh, he's like, but, listen, I had a plan, but I, you ruined it. <laughs> so anyways, but that's yeah. so funny. So that's you true. mentioned having kids. Tell me about starting your family. Did you know, um, did you always know that you wanted to be a mom? Yeah, actually, again, that's why I wanted to work with kids. I really love kids. Um, and the joke was my sister and I both said we both wanted four or five kids and, um, <laughs> it took us a long time, unfortunately. So, um, seven years to get pregnant with my son. Wow. Hindsight, the way I look at it is God had a bigger plan because had I started our family when I wanted to, I wouldn't have been able to build up the business. And the whole reason I wanted to be my own boss is. I wanted to be able to um, schedule my own time. What's up, everyone? It's Morgan, the producer of this beautiful show and also the host of the Half Hood, Half Holy podcast. Just jumping in here with a word from our sponsor. Hey there, friend. I'm Danielle Damrell. And for so long, I thought my brain was broken beyond repair. I could identify all the problems with my life, but I didn't feel like I was actually capable of fixing them. After 12 plus years of intensive therapy, I realized that there was never going to be a quick fix. The solution lied in showing up to check in and care for myself. Time where I set intentions like processing who I am at my core and processing what it would look and feel like to be fully present in order to authentically connect with my family, friends, and my community. Healing doesn't happen overnight and everyone's journey looks different. Developing resilience happens through continuing to persevere in the hard times and finding peace and joy in life, even when you're walking through an overwhelming, confusing, or even downright scary season. This realization is how I discovered creative processing, a method that combines many coping skills and mental health tools into a tangible action that has immediate grounding effects. And the best part? You're probably already doing it. But now, I have finally found a way to show you how to utilize it as a skill in your everyday life. I would like to invite you, yes, you, to join me on the evening of January 17th at 5.30 Mountain Standard Time for a free creative processing workshop. Our intention is going to be to process you. 
I will take you on a journey of what it looks like to actually put creative processing into action. Taking time to process who you are at your core is not selfish. In fact, think of this as a whole new way to practice self-care, a way for you to dive into your subconscious and draw out all the ways that you are uniquely you in order to create space in your fast-paced life to dream and overcome all the creative and emotional blocks we all face all the time. Sometimes we just need a little guidance to bump us back into living in alignment. So come, bring your favorite pen, download the guidebook that I've created just for you, and let's process through creating together. I want to take a minute to speak directly to any mamas for a second. As moms, we don't always feel like we have the right to slow down. But the truth is, your mind, body, and soul needs you to slow the frick down. You need time to check in and care for yourself. So schedule a babysitter or put your husband on kid duty, because I promise this is an opportunity for you to fill your cup. All right, everyone, the link to register is in the show notes. Save your seat today, and I'll see you there. Hi, everyone. It's me again. I just want to say, I've actually been through this workshop twice now, and I am not the meeting slash workshop type of person. And she's not lying when she says this will really help you connect with yourself. Not only that, but I have experienced how close my connection with God can actually be when I just take time to really focus in on me. So just give it a try. What's there to lose? Also, if you haven't already, make sure to check out the Half Hood, Half Holy podcast where Danielle and I take nothing serious except for our love for the Lord. It's a pretty explicitly Christian comedy podcast, so um, make sure to listen if you want to laugh a little. (laughs) <laughs> okay, back to the show. So that when we did have kids, I wanted to be like that room mom, you know, the, the mom that went on all the field trips and things like that. So because it took us a while to have kids, I just went ahead and put my head down and built up my business and got it to the point where um, I didn't have to go to work every day. And so then when God blessed us with my son seven years later, Um, yeah, it was great because then, um, as he grew up and my daughter grew up, I was able to make my own schedule and I was that homeroom mom and I was, you know, the one that got to go on all their field trips. I didn't miss any of their field trips. I didn't miss any of their school performances. So for those of you out there that are listening, if you're creatives and you have a business of your own and you don't have kids yet, but you want kids someday, uh, definitely build your business now. Um, so that you can afford that the luxury of the time to spend with your kids and your family, you know? I don't know if you know this about me, but my husband and I have been going through infertility for three and a half years. Oh, I do I... have one daughter. She's from um, biologically from a relationship when I was only 19. So okay. we've got my little blessing. But um, of course, my husband and I have we've always wanted a lot of kids. I, I want six. He was like, Danielle, if we have kids, you have to settle for four. And I'm like, yeah, (laughs) but (laughs) we didn't know, obviously when we started trying that there would, that we would be going through infertility. There's been, it's actually male factor infertility. Um, but we've gone through a few different procedures already. Um, and we're kind of in a waiting season of deciding, like, do we just wait or, you know, take to take it to the next step of IVF. And right now we don't have peace about that. So yeah. you're, you telling your story is like, I just feel like this is a God moment where I'm like, okay, wow. Like you are encouraging my spirit so, so, so much. And I know that's going to be the case for a lot of other listeners as well. Oh. Just that reminder that, I mean, we hear it all the time. It's God time. It's God's timing over our timing, but yeah. th- there's a purpose for that timing and yeah. your testimony and, and your story of becoming a mother is evidence of that timing, how he used your growth yeah. to be able to prepare you for motherhood so that it wasn't something mm-hmm. that you were not able to be present fully for your kids. He really gave you right. your kids at the right time so that you could be fully present And I think that's something I've struggled with because I'm still like in the beginning phases of my career. I have had my business for five years, but I'm taking it in a whole new direction now. 
Um, And I'm really trying to figure out how to like stabilize my income and all of those different things. And it's so easy for me to be like, but we want a baby, but also it would be so much better if we were just a little more financially stable. And I had the ability to not work seven days a week Mm -hmm. and all of that. So thank you for sharing that. I had no idea you had walked through that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I, you know, at the time when you're going through, it just seems like forever and you pray and you pray and you're like, I, you know, I believe that God had a plan for us, but you know, you're human. And at the time you want what you want, but yeah, I hope that does encourage you because it did take us seven years. I thought I would never, I actually was getting very scared and thought, oh my gosh, I, here I am. I want to be a mom so bad, but I can't even have, you know, my own child. So we actually were looking at adoption and um, it's just, you know how they always say when you, when you um, stop thinking about it, all of a sudden you get pregnant. Yeah. So I have to tell you the circumstances of when I did get pregnant, which was crazy. Um, we had been waiting for years. Um, I actually was about to go and start infertility testing. I literally had um, my first test um, that Wednesday. Um, prior to that, my father had had a really bad stroke and heart attack. And I was fortunately at the time had built up my business so that I could be with him every day. So of course, the last thing on my mind was getting pregnant. I was focused on my mom, helping my dad recover. Um, And then all of a sudden, for some reason, my husband's like, yeah, let's go ahead and maybe look into adoption or infertility or whatever. And he went to hug me on a Monday morning. And Wednesday was my first test for infertility testing, just to kind of explore it. And I remember my boobs hurt (laughs) when he hugged me. And I thought, hmm, that's weird. And then I thought, wait, when was my last period? (laughs) Yeah. No, there's no way. And so I ran to the store and got, I just grabbed whatever um, um, pregnancy test I could find, paid for it, went home and took the test. And when I took the test, so the test says, write two lines and you're pregnant. Yeah. Well, I looked at it and it's like one line. And then there was like a faint line, but that wasn't in any of the choices. <laughs> like, yeah. You're like, wait a minute. <laughs> what is that? You know, and I'm like, ah, oh, this must be a defective uh, test. So I threw it out, ran back to the store, bought the most expensive pregnancy test you could find. Went home, took the test. Same thing. Like this faint line. I'm like, what the heck? Then I pulled out the last one and it was completely dark. So I think I just didn't wait long enough. Then all of a sudden, yeah, so then they both got darker and darker. I'm like, okay, does that mean I'm pregnant? <laughs> so, yeah, then I- So, how I, did you tell your husband? Um, Oh, my gosh. It's so funny. I, it's so funny how guys are just not, like, they don't really pay attention sometimes. Yeah. I stuck the, um, the pregnancy test in, <laughs> this may sound gross, but I stuck it in a Ziploc bag and in a card- <laughs> with him and I gave him the card and the card was all about like you know bedtime stories and fatherhood Aww. and all this and he's like I don't get it <laughs> like, open the card <laughs> and he <laughs> opened the card and he saw I finally saw the pregnancy test and he went wait what and it was a good thing there was a um a couch right there because he literally like fell over <laughs> he was oh in shock. my gosh yeah so that's how I told him <laughs> That's amazing. And then how long after having your first, did you have your second? Yeah. So that's when my son turned one, I told my husband, I said, I still want another, another child if possible. And so we went ahead and started trying and sure enough, like two, two and a half years later, I had my daughter. So wow. it's just yeah, really interesting how like my, my brother, they had no problem having their first child it was their second child they, it was hard for them for us it was the opposite first mm-hmm. child took forever second child no problem wow so, yeah. man yeah. that if that's not god i don't know <laughs> what is right like you're like trying for 7 years <laughs> i know that's amazing oh yeah, my god yeah and it's cuz it took us so long to um i'm always we always end up being like the oldest parents in our kids friend groups because their parents are all like, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years younger than us. But 
I mean, it doesn't matter. We're just so glad. I'm the youngest because I had my daughter at 19. Oh, got it. (laughs) So yeah, all of the parents are, but my husband is 14 years older than me. So they're all his age. (laughs) Got it. Okay. Okay. But yeah, I feel like that realization of like, okay, I understand again now this cliche phrase of age is but a number. It really is but a number, right? Like we are all capable human beings who are doing our best exactly yeah. and even though the moms are a different age than me because we're in the same season of life with our kids it really doesn't matter because no. we're going through the same issues the same growth the same um ups and downs with our kids so right. yeah I, that's why I don't think the the age really does matter at that point so I love that yeah. so Tell me a little bit about your faith. I know that in the pre-information, um, pre-interview information that I sent over to you, I asked what your favorite verse or quote is, and you put Jeremiah twenty nine eleven, which is for I know the plans I have for you, dec- declares the Lord, plans mm-hmm. to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Yes. So how did that? How how did that become your favorite verse? Tell me a little bit about your faith journey. <laughs> So again, another blessing about having kids is um, we knew um, with our faith, we knew that it was going to be important to raise our kids um, with with our faith. And so we actually um, made the decision from the beginning that we were going to let our kids go to private school, even though it wasn't something we could really afford. We budgeted it. We, you know, we didn't, we didn't have fancy cars. We didn't take a lot of trips or anything like that. We really wanted to put it into our kids, kids education and, and learning about Jesus Christ and being a Christian. Um, and so to answer your question about the verse, it actually was my daughter's favorite verse. Oh. And she would always talk about it and, and read it. And um, it became my verse because it really did resonate with how my life has been, you know, like having the, not being able to have um, a baby right away is because he had a bigger plan for me, you know? And at the time you just don't think of that when you're in the midst of everything, you can't see the bigger picture and um, it's okay if you can't see the bigger picture because at the end of the day, I know God has me in his hands and he's got a plan for me. He's got a purpose for me. And Actually, that is my dream job is to do makeup and hair on the set of faith-based films like The Chosen and movies like that. That's like my dream job. <laughs> I would love to see you do that. I Have you watched The Chosen? Oh, yes. We can't wait for season three to start. So oh, I have only seen the first episode. I really, I am not a great TV watcher because I like fall asleep. When I oh, watch you're TV. Like, yeah, that's yeah. like my husband. <laughs> so I always end up like having to go back and rewatch the same thing multiple times before I like yep. actually see the whole season or the whole yeah. episode. Got um, it. But I have heard such incredible things about that series. And yeah, okay. that that would you're I mean, you're in California, right? Do they film there? Um, a lot of it was in Texas, I think. Oh. Yeah. Um, and it was during COVID. That was the amazing thing. Um, they were able to finish a lot of, a lot of it during COVID. Um, but yeah, just, if you get a chance, like listen to like the backstories and stuff and, and all the adversities they had to go through to make this even happen. It really is truly amazing. Wow. Kind of the almost like spiritual warfare that was happening with them and, and trying to get this movie to to actually be well, uh, of course of course the enemy doesn't want there to be truth right. out in the world especially <laughs> truth that impacts a, a wide range of people and having yeah. a tv series or a series like the chosen that's available right. to everyone i could see mm-hmm. exact i would be shocked if there wasn't spiritual oh, warfare yeah. going on <laughs> yeah you'd be kind of worried i think <laughs> yeah i'd be like okay who, what's going on whose spirits off <laughs> yeah, exactly Yeah. Well, that's exciting. Oh, well, I'm going to pray that that is, that comes to be for you because that, that would be really freaking cool. And you're already doing such big things in the makeup world that it's really not an unobtainable goal. Yeah. I, I mean, I feel like, uh, 
if I just got, get the, the opening, I definitely want to take it. Um, I've actually done a couple of um, faith-based films already. And that's kind of how I got a taste of it. And I thought, oh, maybe this is the reason why I have these gifts, right? Because I, I pray in the mornings to ask God to allow me to use my gifts to further his kingdom. And I'm like, well, how could I do that? Well, maybe on on the um, on faith-based films or things like that. Yes. You know? God use, uses all of our individual gifts to benefit right. his. And and I do want to encourage you that like right now in what you're doing, even in bridal makeup and female entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial makeup, yeah. there we go. Um, <laughs> God is at work through you as well. Like even just, I met you in person at a conference in North Carolina just a couple months ago. And I immediately was like, oh, this girl, this lady, she is shining. So I Aww. feel like I could see the Lord through, through you. And like, just your presence is exudes the love of Christ. So I just want to encourage you in that, that like, wherever you are, God is oh. with you and he is working through you and shining through you. And oh, you're so you're sweet. Amazing. So nice to meet another believer. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like I'm the only one, but For you sure. know, it's great. Nope. Thank We're you. out there. <laughs> yeah. So I asked you also about your creative processing method, and you mentioned um, creating aesthetically pleasing checklists on Canva to plan out events or beauty classes, and that you also love to organize and decorate to get your creative process going. Have mm -hmm. I explained to you my definition of creative processing? No, I don't think you have. Okay. So creative processing is a tool like a coping skill that we can all use to activate our creative minds to process through any certain intention. So okay. a, a prompt that you could use is the purpose of doing fill in your creative method is to process fill in whatever you want you're wanting to process. So okay. I, both of what you shared are definitely creative processing methods. But the reason that I bring this up in the show is because creative processing is something that we all are all subconsciously doing pretty much every single day in different okay. ways. Some people are creating spreadsheets. Some people are creating checklists on Canva. Some people <laughs> are drawing. Some people are writing. It It's whatever way you engage your creative mind. And for more analytical minds, they engage it in different ways. Mm -hmm. For creatives, it, it, it usually does have more of that artistic flair. So the reason that I believe that this is something that's really transformational and something that I want more people to learn and know about is because when we know how to utilize something as a tool, then it turns into a skill that then becomes in becomes muscle memory. And when you are utilizing creative processing with intention, mm -hmm. it brings uh, clarity, joy, and purpose into whatever you're doing. So if you're feeling stuck or you're feeling sad or you're you're just needing to process through a bad day, the mm -hmm. act of creating intentionally can bring that, can move that needle forward even just one step or can improve mm -hmm. your mindset just 1%. And that's what we're called to do, right? Is just continue to walk forward in the ways that we can. Right. I've been in therapy consistently for over 12 years and have learned a ton of different coping skills. But what I realized back in 2021 was that creating in itself could be a coping skill if used again with intention. So mm -hmm. with creative processing, I actually just hosted my very first creative processing workshop last night just oh. to try it out and see, is this, is a guided creative processing workshop going to actually serve people and help people to, to get out of even just the immediate feelings of anxiety or depression or whatever, okay. so that there's some sort of peace and hope and clarity that we can find, even if we're living in the middle of a chaotic season. And what I found just from last night with the seven people that showed up was that it does work. Like I've known that it works because I talked to a lot of different people who, we, we uncover those threads and then we talk about how we can use those things with intention. But I saw it in action when you set apart, we just did three different prompts, 15 minutes, and all of a sudden there was clarity. They felt hope. They, there was a little bit more direction. They don't, you, it's not that you have all the answers. It's not about you becoming a brand new human being, right? It's about changing mm -hmm. your mind just 1% so that you right. can continue looking forward. So... <laughs> All of that to say, my my creative processing soap soapbox. I love that you 
that organizing is part of your creative processing method. That's the tool in your toolbox that you probably use the most often. And it sounds like with organizing, there's usually an intention that's already set. So do you want to give me an example of how you utilize organization um, to continue yeah. moving forward? So um, I, I've never taken those Enneagram tests, but in, back in the day, it was just a personality test. And I know my personality is I'm a, um, what they call a, oh my gosh, now I forgot the name of it, but um, I'm an expressive and I, 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 I always have FOMO. Like I want to do everything. Yes. I don't want to be left out of anything. But what ends up happening is when I say yes to everything and I have so many plates, I'm spinning, I get disorganized. Mm -hmm. And when I'm disorganized, I can't even focus on enjoying anything that I've right. got started. So for me, I mean, you asking that question originally, um, I had to really sit and think how do I then allow the create creative process to happen when I'm in chaos like that because I feel mm -hmm. like sometimes that's how I am through whole the whole week it's just chaotic with all the different lists and everything that I got to do and just having that organizational process of putting everything back into an organized fashion mm -hmm. helped me to calm down and not have the anxiety that I was yeah. having looking at all the different things I still had to get done um, with Thanksgiving just right around the corner, you know? So yeah, for me, it's just literally putting everything back into an organized fashion so that even though I have a million things to do, at least they're all in, they're all organized. They're all listed in, a pri in the priority that they need to be um, focused on. And it allows my brain to just go, okay, take a deep breath. I can breathe. Exactly. Thank you so much for sharing about that. Yes. So my goal with creative processing and talking about it and having these conversations is really to be um, completely honest. I would love for this to be something that like you just know, like, oh, my gosh, I'm feeling so stressed out yeah. or like I'm spinning. I just need 20 minutes to do some creative processing. When yeah. Because when you have a term like that, it's one of those when you know better, you do better. Right. 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 And a lot of times we can identify the problem like, oh, I'm so disorganized or, oh, I'm struggling with anxiety because X, Y, and Z happened. But how do you actually conquer the problem, right? And we get stuck on this, like, I know about it, but I can't figure out how to fix it. And a tool is that bridge. Creative processing yeah. can be that bridge to conquering that problem. Right. And that's and that's so, so important. Like we all need that no matter what you're going through at any season of life, there's going to be days that are hard or yeah. challenges that you're facing and we need to have tools that we can get through them and not everybody can afford therapy. So even right. if you just have a certain term like creative processing that you're like, oh, you know what? I do know how to do that. I can do that. Yeah. I can sit down and I can fill in the prompt of the purpose of creating a list is to process my week I can do mm -hmm. that like it just makes it a little bit more tangible well thank you because I didn't even know that's what I was doing but yeah. now that you're like you said now that I'm aware of it I will definitely be more intentional about um, when I do sit down to organize things and and be more intentional like you said because I, I don't like just constantly being in the operation of urgency and chaos which I feel like a lot of us tend to do. Yeah, um, and we get stuck in it. It's like a hamster wheel of just like, I'm in chaos, I'm in chaos, I'm in chaos. Well, what can we do to like stop that? Yeah, exactly. Well, well the, other thing, up. the other thing um, I'm starting to learn as a creative process is also just delegating some of that mm -hmm. stuff. You yeah. Know? So looking at getting a VA now, so that's something on my list to kind of just offload some of that stuff that yeah. I really don't need to be doing. And yeah, and that's kind of exciting, actually. It'd be nice to that's not be- That's super exciting. Yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, why don't you tell me a little bit about what's next in your business? So what's next in my business is quite a bit. We, um, I don't know if you knew this, but my modern beauty is actually my more of my bridal and makeup. And then where we're sitting in today is my brick and mortar, which is my skincare studio. So it's okay. called LG Waxing and Aesthetics. So we do all of the trial runs here, but we also do the facials and the waxing and um, 
I'll let the aesthetics here. The day of the wedding, we go on location. So they're kind of like two different businesses right now, um, mainly because the wedding business started first. That's the one that I created in my home. Um, and then this one was a partnership that I had um, and she moved back to Israel prior to COVID and I bought it from her. So I have these two different businesses and uh, honestly, it's hard enough to run one. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> so what we're doing is before the end of the year is kind of merging the two. So then I'll just, I'm kind of combining the name. So it'll be modern beauty and aesthetic um, so that. that people realize that we still, you know, we do do the aesthetic side of it, um, which is a benefit for the brides because they can come in and get facials and get their gut checked and um, helped and their skin looking great for the wedding. So I'm trying to encompass it all. So we're going to merge the two together. Um, change, so I just got some new logos, new branding, everything. Oh, fun. So, yeah, I'm excited for that. And like I said, trying to delegate. So I hired someone who's going to help with my HR. I hired um, my first virtual CFO ever. Um, which was scary and exciting at the same time. Yeah. Um, and I just hired my second esthetician. So now I'll have two estheticians working. That's so. amazing. Look at you growing and expanding. <laughs> That's so exciting. Well, next year, we're speaking yeah. life over next year. Next year is going to be the year of growth. Yay. Yes. That would be wonderful. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so where can people find and connect with you? Um, so you can go to my website. Um, it is getting changed over, but for now it's still modernbeauty.com and modern has the E at the end of it. So it's M-O-D-E-R-N-E beauty.com. Um, um, and then I believe I sent you, I do have a, um, a free downloadable PDF for all of my entrepreneur women that maybe have struggle a little bit with getting ready before they get on camera. I have my seven, um, seven tips of how to show up confident on camera. So, yes. um, and we will have all of that in the show notes. We will have all of Monina's, um, contact information and where, where is your brick and mortar located? I'm in the barrier. So I'm in okay. San Jose. Um, if for those of you who are in San Jose, um, I'm in a little area called Willow Glen. Um, and that's where my shop is. Amazing. Mm -hmm. So yes, I'm sure if you Google her, she'll pop right up and you can get in contact that way as well. But we will have her information in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So so grateful to have spent some time with you here today and for your courage and vulnerability to share your story. Oh, thank you too for sharing your story. I had no idea. I'll be praying for you, my friend. Thank you. And you yes. And I'm going to be praying for you and all of your business happenings. Thank you so yeah. much. Appreciate I it. just want to encourage you to keep glowing and helping other women embrace their natural beauty to feel confident in their own skin. Yeah. You, my friend, are created worthy. Thanks for tuning in to the Created Worthy Podcast. If anything in today's show resonated with you, can you do me a huge favor and go leave a five-star review? This helps more listeners find the show and it also expands the impact, messages, and stories that are shared here. All the links and guest information are in the show notes. If you're on social media, I want to personally invite you to continue the conversations about these important topics that we're talking about. You can find Created Worthy on both Instagram and Facebook by just typing in Created Worthy Podcast. Can't wait to talk to you soon, friend. And don't forget, you are Created Worthy.